What's up guys, my name is Zero Heroes and welcome back to more Call to Arms Gates of Hell's news update. Now, as you know, Call to Arms has done an update, or Gates of Hell have done an update on a on the open beta and you can see it is big and they post this on friday the april 16th so i know i am a wee bit late but as you know i don't post over the weekend and and then i got caught with another video so with wolf so if you guys haven't seen that video then i highly go check them in your wreck out because it was actually a really funny video and i usually do a lot more editing in that video than my usual video so make sure you go check it out in the link down below so anyway it says here that Call to Arms have done a big open beta update single player. This is just for the single player. So no, this isn't the second phase. This is just part of the phase one of this beta update. So if you guys do want to stay tuned for more updates, then let me know in the comments down below and subscribe if you're new because you will get shouted at the end of the video. And without further ado, let's get started. So as you can see, there are a lot of points here. There's like more than like 20 points here, but in true fashion of myself because i i don't read you know i'm lazy i i don't really read well so what i've done in true fashion of zero heroes channel here that we i have simplified it down to put it on a word document where i feel like i've pointed out the most important parts of the update or i feel as i've put in you know what's most important that they added into the game if that makes sense so i haven't added all the points that i know there's more probably a lot more points but if you guys want to check that out for yourself then again i'll leave it in the, in the description down below or just if you've got the game then just go into steam store page and uh, have a look for yourself so these are the points that i've written down here that i feel like that are very important to the game and has made a huge difference so guys without further ado we're going to get straight into it so the first one that i thought was really important was they re-added the first soviet mission now two playable missions are available now this the the they re-added the first soviet mission so that was the first original mission that came into the game and there was and that was like the first ever mission that came into it and to be honest i already did a video on it so if you guys haven't seen it then make sure you go check it out so to be honest i thought the first soviet mission was absolutely really good and i absolutely loved it and when they updated this they you can see there's like a whole lot more improvements on the game and you'll see it when you actually play the game for yourself but to be honest, they've re-added it and it looks 10 times better and it feels a lot more Russian, if that makes sense. So, but I'm very happy that they re-added it into this game because I thought they've taken it out and then they're not going to add it back in, which was kind of a shame because I, I think a lot of people enjoyed the mission, but I'm really glad that everyone did enjoy this mission and they've re-added it back. So big props to them for doing that. The next one that they added in was they added in the mine, mining section at the end of training two. Now, I I did the training the training mission too, but I can't remember it off by heart. So, but I'm kind of glad they added in the mining section because a lot of people might not know how to put mines down, and I feel like that gives players the advantage of how to place mine down, place mines down, and hopefully help them in future battles, maybe against the AI or against players, and that hopefully should give them a wee boost when you're actually playing one of the missions where you do actually have to set down mines where the in the in the soviet missions where you do have to place down mines so the fact that they've added this in a mining section is absolutely great and it'll, and it'll help people out a lot of how to mine sections on the ground next moving on to the added realistic burst mechanics shot amount delay zeroing so i don't know what it means by kind of i presume added realistic burst mechanics means like like I presume, I, I'm, by the way, this is based off what I think. It's not what based off, like, what, you know, what I've been told or anything. This is just pure off just my thought. So, added realistic burst mechanic means, like, I believe it's quite realistic to real life with the burst mechanics, such as, like, shot amount. So, when you shoot a gun, um, the burst mechanics are feel more realistic in that way and the delays in it as well and zeroing in i presume zeroing in is when you is when you go into first person and you try to zero in on a person it feels more realistic in that burst mechanics way i'm probably mostly getting that wrong but if you guys know then of course let me know in the comments don't go oh zero you know nothing just be kind about it just let me know because i might not know everything and this is why you guys are here to help me out as well 
Okay, next thing I want to move on to is the added, they added many new FX sounds from diesel exhaust to massive HE impacts on impacts on objects this is something that i'm very happy to see because i think when we when it when the game first got when we were all able to first play the game the sounds were good but they weren't excellent yes they were much better than men of war Shock squad 2 and they're roughly about the same level as in call to arms but now that they've put a new fx sounds in for like diesel exhaust when you control a tank or when you move a tank and especially for massive HE impacts on objects. So let's say you put, you fire a, an artillery, uh, you fire an artillery onto a ground or something like that and it and it kind of impacts on the object then you'll hear like new sounds from it which I absolutely love so I'm v and I've already played some of it already so it's actually a really big difference I can hear. So again, big props up for gates fell for doing that next is that they added sandbag fortification to vehicles now this i thought was interesting because i didn't know this was maybe one of the necessities i wouldn't consider this very important per se to the game because yes you know adding sandbags fortification to vehicles but how would you do it do you need to get engineers to build around the tank or do you click on the tank and on the bottom tab there's like you'll be able to automatically put a, a sandbag fortification around it i kind of see where they're coming from they i feel like they kind of maybe took it from slightly call to arms because you can do that in call to arms as well with some vehicles so i don't know if they i don't know if this wasn't a necessity i don't know if obviously people did add ask for this but i don't know if i feel like that was that was necessity but i feel like it is still quite important because when you're in a defending mission you're def that's definitely going to be helpful in your defense against it okay next is the improved gun ranges accuracy and penetration curves now this is something that i found really important because the improved gun ranges you can see that when playing it when i got into first person i thought that the gun range was absolutely rubbish and um, i presume that's only on soldiers and not on tanks so I presume that's what it means, and I feel like when I was shoot when I was going into first person as a soldier, and the gun ranges were absolutely terrible. I can maybe only see about maybe ten feet in front of me. Maybe yeah, I'm being slightly, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm not exactly being, I'm being exaggerate. You know what I mean? I'm like I'm being exaggerate, but you get the point of how kind of bad it was. But now that they've improved it, so the accuracy is in penetration curves. I presume that penetration curves means like, that means how far you can penetrate into a target when it curves, I think. I don't know if I'm right. I'm probably wrong. But of course, you guys can let me know. Okay, next thing I thought was absolutely amazing. I'm very happy they add this was the improved third person views. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is something that I've wanted to wait for a long time. I think the improved third person um, it's absolutely amazing. I've already been into it. I presume that third person is is what like is when you press T on a soldier or a or a or a guy or a sorry tank or a soldier. You can actually kind of zoom out with the scroll wheel, so you can either go first person or third person when you when you press when you press uh, T on your keyboard. When you scroll out with the uh, with the scroll wheel, that means you can go into third person or first person. So I have seen the difference, and it just looks it just automatically looks ten times better. So I'm very very happy that they added this in. Next, I want to talk about was the improved shell holes. So visual improvements and realistic sizes. So I presume shell holes is that when you fire a tank, when you use a tank or a grenade or a H or an artillery and it kind of and it impacts on the ground, I presume that shows like the shell holes on the ground and it shows a real and it shows the visual improvements and realistic sizes to it so before it might have not been quite realistic or this the size scale might have not been realistic to the explosion i presume that's what it means to improve shell holes so it i i definitely can agree that it does look 10 times better i don't actually i don't know i didn't really kind of pay attention to that kind of thing but obviously people have and definitely this is something that i also can kind of find very important because people are probably going to complain that maybe a grenade shell or maybe actually you know what i did notice it actually when i threw a grenade at a, at a soldier you know how the explosion was very small i guess now that it's going to be bigger now so actually you know what i did i did see that 
Okay, moving on to the next one, which is the improved support tank and standardize them with direct game logic. So I presume what that means, I'm sorry if you can hear an ambulance, but it's very warm in my room. So anyway, so I presume what this means is that when, um, so when you have support tanks and when they're kind of in control with the AI, they use direct fire game logic. So that means they're going to be more direct fire towards the, the target that they're firing at. And it's more, yeah, that's why I put like a question mark beside it because I wasn't quite sure what it meant. But I presume it means that the support tanks, the AI, such as say, they'll have more, they'll be more standardized and uh, standardize them with the direct fire game logic. So I presume that means, again, when the AI is taking control of it and they see an AI, they'll use direct fire at them and they'll use more of kind of a game knowledge to kind of, basically fire at them i think again i'm probably wrong but that's why i put a question mark beside it so you guys can let me know next thing i wanted to talk about was the increased damage taken to soldiers particularly the soldiers arms now i don't get what why many people why they put in particularly the soldiers arms was it because when maybe you shot the soldiers arms and um, they kind of the soldiers survived longer i i didn't really see anything wrong with that um, but it is, Chris, the, it is good the increased damage um, taken onto soldiers. It just means it's more real, realistic because when soldiers go for the head or something, then they're going to die automatically. Or when they go for the heart, of course, when they shoot the heart, then they're going to die immediately. So, But I don't get why they put particularly the soldiers' arms. I didn't really see that. But of course, you guys will always help me. Now, this one I was quite confused at. Well, not confused, I thought it was a wee bit too OP. Increased MG effective effectiveness at long range. And the reason I put too OP is because this could be very, very effective when multiplayer goes in. A lot of people might be using like MG emplacements or something. It just says MG, I, I didn't say MG gun to MG emplacements, it just says MG. So, which stands for a machine gun. So. I'm quite worried that this might be slightly too OP and a lot of players might be using it against other players and this could be worrying for the game because I think that this could be too overpowered for for the players and especially when you're playing against hard AI most of them will probably might use MG at long range which means a lot of your troops will die and it just I think that is slightly OP to op in my opinion so i don't know if you guys like agree with me yeah again you know what to do next one is the increased at damage able to break through hulls of medium and heavy tanks in grenade if explosion is strong enough to breach the hull i put question marks because i again i didn't slightly understand this i mean i kind of reading this over now understand it now but again is this maybe slightly too OP, but I guess where the balancing factor is in this is that if it explodes and the if it if the explosion is strong enough to breach the hull, so if the increased AT damage on a grenade is is strong enough, is if the explosion is strong enough to breach the hull, then yes, it'll be able to take a medium tank or heavy tank out in one blow. But if it doesn't, then the tank might only might blow off the tracks or something explosion might blow off the tracks again this is very much a 50 50 much a 50 50 thing if it's overpowered i guess this is why this is why they put this kind of balancing factor in because if they only put the increased damage and in, able to break through a hull of medium and heavy armors um of tanks and that'd be straight out op but i because they added this if explosion is strong enough to break to breach through the hull i think that's where the balancing factor comes in and i think that could be quite good so you very much do have a 50 50 chance of whether the at grenade will actually pen penetrate through the medium or the heavy tanks hull so i kind of like it but i don't know i'm still very on i'm still quite worried about how this could turn out next one is the decreased mg accuracy for humans when standing or kneeling so i presume that mg1 here was maybe for like the mg emplacements when you have an actual machine gun but this is the decreased mg accuracy for humans so when you use an mg emplacement it'll be more effective at long range but when you use an mg for a human um like an mg34 and a human has it when he's standing or kneeling then the then he'll be less accurate then so again i kind of like that balancing factor there and it'd be quite good so a lot of you might will probably um will probably put your 
it, your soldiers with MGs laying down, which will make them harder to shoot at, and it'll be, again, the MG might have the same accuracy. Again, that could be slightly overpowered, in my opinion, because when you lay them down, it's harder for your soldiers to hit, and your MG still has the same accuracy when you're laying down. So, I don't know, this is still very much, it could be a very much 50-50 thing if it's OP or not. This one I thought was quite interesting, decreased re regain rate of supply truck. To be honest, I never thought that the the regain rate of supply trucks was too OP. Um, I thought it was actually quite a mediocre level. I don't know if it's maybe the same as maybe like Call to Arms or something. I, I don't know why they did this. I, I didn't think it was too overpowered, in my opinion. I thought it was actually okay because I thought it all it all depended on the the rate of fire of like the tank or the or the artillery. I thought that's I thought that was maybe the was maybe the the OP thing. But when uh, but I get where they're coming from and I kind of but it just makes the tank slightly vulnerable to open fire as it takes longer for the su for the supply truck to get into the tank or the vehicle. So I guess I I don't know. I guess this is still quite an interesting thing, um, quite an interesting factor that I'm still maybe worried about. Okay, next I want to talk about the decreased flame particle gravity, lower flat trajectory for flamethrower weapons. Now, to be honest, I didn't really think this was a problem because. I didn't think there was too many flamethrowers in the game at the start. Of course, you can use flamethrower people, but you didn't use many of them in, like, the missions because you weren't given many. Maybe you're given, like, one flame flamethrower guy, especially in a Russian campaign, in a Russian mission. So, I don't know. I, didn't, I wouldn't maybe call this a necessity, but I understand why they did it because they don't want to make the... Because a lot of people must have thought that the flamethrower, the particle gravity was, like... You, the flamethrower was the range was quite far on it, which is why they lowered the gravity, um, the gravity particle and made it flatter. Uh, because the flamethrower would usually go like that, and it was at long range, so I understand why they did it. And going in with that, they decreased the heat required to set woods buildings on fire. Now, that's quite worrying, I feel like that could be quite worrying and quite OP for it. So, it's basically I don't know, cause I feel like that could be too OP for um for a uh, for a lot of flamethrower guys who use them. So they've literally made the trajectory better for flamethrowers, and now it's easier to set uh, the wood houses on fire. I don't know, but you can use Boltovs to also set buildings on fire. I understand why they did it, cause you maybe might need you you might have needed maybe about three or four uh, uh, Molotovs to set it on fire. But also you have to consider about flamethrowers who use them as well. So I don't know. I don't maybe think if that was a necessity. Next one is the humans run slower compared to mechanized counterparts. And obviously you guys thought that humans were running faster than tanks. Which to be honest made sense. So now they, they've made the, the humans run slower. And so that means the mechanized vehicles will go faster than the humans. Quite easy to understand. Next thing, going on to the decreased durability for tank tankette or tankite with MG. So that's like tanks who have MGs. So the T27, the Panzer one, and the and the and more, etc. I don't know. I I guess again, I'm still very much on 50/50 edge about that one because I thought tanks, I thought the T27, the Panzer one were already the durability was still quite slow on them. They weren't exactly fast, and I know they're kind of light tanks essentially but i wouldn't call them fast i would thought the durability and the, and the the track traverse and all that was okay i wouldn't think it was too overpowered but i see why they did it because they obviously thought that a lot of you guys requested it and they might have and they might have thought that these kind of tanks were turning too quickly or they might have gone to positions too quickly so you know i understand why they did it next thing is the fixed crashed on game on save game this is something huge because this is something that a lot of people have trouble on is that when you're in a game and when you're in the middle of a game and you try to save the game and then the game crashes that's just like all your work gone that's all the progress you've put into that game and now it's gone so i'm very glad they've done it in cult arms they've done it in men of Warsaw squad 2 
they have done it but it kept crashing so i really hope gates of hell that this actually that you stick to your word and hopefully that this is actually fixed now of course there'll it's still a beta stage and uh, of course there will be crashes happening but i hope it's like greatly reduced the amount of uh get uh crashed on game save so big big tops to these guys as well next one is fixed grenade trajectory is not locked as a grenade is being thrown something huge as well is that so so let's say you're throwing a grenade to another human that means it locks on to the target nearest to the grenade or when you throw or when you throw a grenade the grenade locks onto the nearest target now the grenade when you throw it is not locked onto any any enemies and it'll just throw in the direction of of where you throw it so it's not been locked on so again that's a big tops to these guys that makes it very much more realistic for when you throw a grenade because when you throw a grenade in real life it's not being exactly locked on to anything it's just when you throw a grenade it goes anywhere so you know big tops to these guys last but not least we are going into the fixed reload bolting animations no longer stop delay moves change stance or any other orders given by player I don't know what this quite means um, I did add it because it did actually seem quite important so what I'm getting at this is that when you are reloading um, a, when you reload or an a bolting animation will no longer stop or delay when you move your character so when you move your when you move your soldier when you're running I presume when you run you stop you stop reloading your gun so now when you presume when you move or when you change stance or anything you're you're um you reload you reload you know when you're running or when you're changing stance doesn't matter of any situation that you're in so something that i don't know again i'm still very much in question with because that might be slightly too op because it, you might get the advantage on the other player but again i don't know i th it was a good change but i don't know i'm still very much on the fix about it but there you go guys that is it for all my thoughts on the points that they are uh, that uh that i thought was important to add in or the most important points that they added into the game of course there is more points that they added in the update but of course you guys can check that out for yourself but these are th what i think is the most important parts that they added into the game so there you go guys that is it for today thank you so much for watching and also support and if you are new to the channel make sure you do subscribe because i will give you a big shout out at the end of every video and stream that i do and just talk about shout outs why not we do some now so i've got a big shout out to to meepy54 thank you very much for subscribing mate welcome to the channel a big shout out to joe mock thank you very much for subscribing and a big shout out to Far and Wide. Thank you very much for subscribing. And I think that's it. So there you go, guys. If you want a shout out like these guys, and if you have subscribed but hasn't come up on my notifications, then thank you very much for subscribing. Let's see if we can hit to 800 subscribers before the end of May on my birthday. So that'd be a big, big birthday present. Uh, that'd be great. And of course, let's try and see if we can hit that 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So guys, that's it for today. What are your thoughts on the Call to Art? the call to arms gates of hell update is there anything that you thought was absolutely great that they added into the game or do you think there was anything that you know was a complete waste of time and they didn't need to add into the game so on that guys thank you so much for watching and our support and i will see you in the next video see you later and goodbye